Hi, I'm Lee Jamison. In a lifetime of living uh, as an artist and raising kids, I would occasionally try to do things to uh, stir up the creativity and how my kids thought. And to do that, I would engage them to a certain extent in the process of being imaginative themselves. So sometimes I wrote them stories. Today I found one of those stories and started reading it and I remembered where it came from and thought I would record that both so my kids and grandkids could see uh, the story remembered again. I do remember reading this to them when they were kids or to my kids when they were kids back in the 90s. So I take up the story and it's just a, it's a brief little thing uh, in sort of mid telling. Daddy, said Amber, tugging on his pants. What's Mr. Buck's name? Daddy leaned down. Amber, I don't think you should be disappointed if he has no name. He's a bug. What is that supposed to mean? The bug protested. I think I should be very disappointed not to have a name. Well, Amber pried. The bug cocked his head. Daddy took this to be a failure to comprehend. She's asking you what your name is. My apologies, the bug replied. It had not occurred to me until this moment that my name is in a language other than that we are speaking now. It would translate, I suppose, to head cocked one quarter to the right. Nobody ever told me that when I lived in the city, said Mrs. Kaiser. Mrs. Kaiser would be a reference to a neighbor. David, his brow furrowed at first, suddenly smiled. I get it, he said, and he cocked his head in reply. That is the correct reply, said Head Cocked. Young male human, Head Cocked continued. You... You mentioned food burning a moment ago. Yes. Is it still burning? David's eyes momentarily glazed. Oh, yes. And the smoke alarm is going off, said Daddy, as he ran back to the house. I take it then, that very lovely sound coming from your nest is not music, said Hedcock as he watched Daddy bound up the steps. Inside the Kaiser's house, Berkeley was burying his head beneath the pillows on the sofa. Momentarily, a window toward the back of the Clater's house went up, and white smoke began to filter out. Amber's sister, Amy, and Brittany Kaiser, who had been roller skating down at the covered pavilion by the church, walked up about this time. Amy was always quick to speak her mind, so she chimed in at first. I don't know what y'all are all looking at, but has anyone noticed the really big bug? It was a fowl with smoke, Amber said dramatically. Her hands spread wide, going in circles to either side of her head. And the fowl with a wham is going beep, 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 beep. She was jumping up and down by the end of this exposition. Amy supposed that were the house actually on fire, that would be the most interesting thing happening on the little dirt street in Dodge. But after glancing in Brittany's eyes, she decided to move on to David. David, other than the smoke, have you noticed anything unusual? David, momentarily shaken from his reverie at the smoke drifting from the two kitchen windows, looked over at Amy and Brittany. What? he puzzled. Oh, you want to know about Headcocked? Both girls' faces 
suddenly blank, cocked their heads. No, no, David said, the other way. More blank stares. That's his name, David said. I think, perhaps, Hedcock interrupted, they may not have enough information to understand what you are telling them. Brittany, who had been raised to be proper and polite, addressed the bug. My apologies. We haven't been introduced. My name is Brittany Kaiser. Are my friends, Amy Clater and her older brother, David, and her younger sister, Amber. What is your name? Humans have names, too. The huge bug mused. My name, well, David has told you a portion of it. David grimaced. I'm sorry, he said. His name is Headcocked, one quarter to the right. Humans do seem much less formal than we in the insect community, said Headcocked, but no offense taken. Mrs. Kaiser grinned a sly grin. The way we do names in our language, well, that would make you Mr. Wright. The older girls giggled. Neither Amber, David, nor Mr. Wright understood why that was so funny, but they all liked replacing seven words with two. As the introductions had been happening, Daddy had continued raising windows. The sounds of the smoke alarm were now much clearer, while this was very pleasant to Mr. Wright, to whom the general alarm sounded like the singing of his friends back in the forests of home, it was most unpleasant to the humans. To Amber, it presented an opportunity to use the new name of her friend. Mr. White, she said, facing the giant earnestly, flap your wings and make the wind blow. This she illustrated with her arms. Blow the moke, she said. To a sort of stuttering run dance, her hands billowing out before out the house. That seemed a rather good idea to all present, so as Mr. Wright explained to the humans how Amber's mixing of the use of gesture in the insect fashion and language in the human fashion was like the pigeons, the languages that developed between countries meeting for the first time, the little group wandered to the front po porch of the Clater's house. There, Mr. Wright braced himself, warned everyone to back clear of his wingspan and began to flap. Initially, the first few strokes were a little too strong, and Amy and David's bikes were blown off the end of the porch. But Mr. Wright softened his effort a little, and soon the smoke alarms in the old wooden house began to fall silent. The last to stop, naturally, was the one in the kitchen near the back of the house. At the Kaiser's house, the gate had been left open, so Berkeley, no longer hiding from the sound of smoke alarms, wandered to the corner of the front yard and watched in wonder. There he was joined by Smokey, the Clater's Russian blue cat, and Patches, their calico. Normally, they would be playing the roles of cats teasing and dog barking at each other, but this particular evening was anything but normal. The three of them just looked at each other, then over at their people with the big bug, and then back again. They huddled close together, as though it was cold, in spite of the Texas July heat. Most of the evening at the Clater's house was spent washing smoke out of clothes and hanging them out on the line. There, Mr. Wright would flap them dry. As it happened, he liked cotton as much as silk, so those clothes that had been smoked beyond repair or wouldn't be needed anymore because Wesley, the youngest clayer, would not be wearing his sister's hand-me-downs, made a more than adequate supper. He also liked the very nice smoky flavor. As it happened, Hedcock was also a firefly, which was ringing bells in Daddy's head. So he illuminated everything in the peculiar greenish hue of his family. 
Both families sat in their chairs, enjoying the steady breeze their guest generated as he ate a couple of smoked cotton dresses in the summer heat. So, Mr. Wright mused, chewing slowly. That subtle flavor is oregano smoke and masked by the more pungent tomato-based flavor. Most humans, of course, would not be nearly as appreciative of, of these particular smoke flavors as you seem to be, Mama interjected, having just gotten home from a shopping trip with one-year-old Wesley as the cleanup began. She had, in fact, not seemed to be appreciative at that time. She was doing better now. Bug emotions are different from mammal emotions, but even Mr. Wright had been able to tell when Mama got home that it might be a good idea to go to the backyard and twiddle his antenna or something. Soon the children had joined him, as did the Kaiser kids and their parents. Mr. Kaiser had gotten word of the visitor and now had to be reminded not to gawk. It's not polite. Mrs. Kaiser said, having elbowed him in the ribs. Italian should see this, he replied. He's always talking about stuff like compound eyes and what a bug would see. Beyond the barbed wire fence that more often than not kept the cows on Ivy McMillan's big field behind the Clater's acre, shadows had begun to lengthen. Their bluish cast had carved into the oranges and yellows of dry summer grass. I've got Mr. Gedalian for my teacher next year, said David. Mr. Wright, could I take you to class for show and tell? What is class? The firefly asked. Mr. Kaiser, a teacher himself, answered. We train our young over a long time in social organizations we call schools. Humans have to be able to do many kinds of things, so we teach each other those different functions in smaller groups we call classes. Mrs. Kaiser told me you mentioned Occam's razor. How did you come to know about that? I've actually wondered that myself, came the somewhat distant-sounding reply from the bug. You see what we're doing here? Mr. and Mrs. Kaiser puzzled at each other. Avoiding Mrs. Clater while she yells at Mr. Clater? I've had watching a sunset in mind. To which the Kaisers nodded approvingly. From my days when the world was bigger, I can recall the elders speaking of their young day and night. Their middle day and night. And then the old day and night. Some might recall as many as five cycles of the sun. He fell silent for a moment. Are you worried because the lives of your kind are short? Mrs. Kaiser asked. That's just the amazing thing. Mr. Wright turned from the lengthened shadows to look at her. Since the world became small, I have seen days more than I would ever have thought I would need to count. I have seen the rising and the setting of the sun move northward and then southward again in the sky. That is a thing of the rune gestures and the dances from the ancients. And that's all there is to that story. One of the things that I've always loved to do with children is to get them to think from different points of view. So what would the point of view of a firefly be? Or what would the point of view of your cat and dog be? And get them to imagine a little bit outside the human experience. Or to imagine more about what happens inside the human experience. So this was an effort at getting my kids to think a little bit in that, in that regard. 
and to involve some of the neighbors that they knew. I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll do some more readings. I've, I've actually had people suggest that we do like dramatic readings of Wikipedia articles and such, just for the humor that can be found in such readings. So that may be a possibility, but we'll see. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the video.